How's it going? Good. Good. Any questions about anything before we get started? Yes. Because they have to be the PDF for the individual random variables. So yes, when you do a marginal, it better add up the one when you do the unit roll up with that. Yeah, add a random variable. Hi, Grace. And I got a minute to spare. Doing that with the play being ever better than you? It wasn't. Thanks. Two minutes. I don't know what I'm yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you have to be careful when my how you set up your head. This is the best I can. So that was the last week problem. Your I thought I was like Jimmy. That was like so your support is rectangular, but it'd be a little bit careful. Okay. So there's our support, right? The x's go from zero to two, and the y goes from zero to one. So the you want the y to be in between x over two and x. So y equals x will be. That line, right? Because it goes through 1, 1. And y equals x over 2 will be that line. That's pretty good. Thanks. Honestly, <laughs> that was really good. I have good days. They're just not very many. You know who's really good at drawing graphs and stuff? She's I'm not. A, she's a better drawer than you. Yeah, how do you oh, Wow, that takes a lot of effort. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Joe has the best variable drawing ability in the math department now. <laughs> I don't know, Dr. Rothby writes some good ones. The cleanest X I've ever seen. The <laughs> cleanest X I've ever seen. All right, so this is the region that you want to integrate over here. So do you want to integrate this with respect to Y first or with respect to X first? You want to go that way, right? Yeah. So yeah, set it up that way. So you would need these. These are your lines in terms of x, right? So you would need them in terms of y then to keep them around. And then, and then your y goes from zero. Correct. Yep, that's right. Other questions? What number was that for? 11.9. Other questions at all? Before I continue to finish up what we were doing last time? Sorry. <laughs> like all of them. All three of the ones out of the board. Like, have parts? Yeah. Yeah, yeah but the parts so is like parts within parts. Yep. <laughs> yeah, part B it's had like parts. It's inception. <laughs> it's inception for math yeah, problems. Like all right, so let's talk about what we uh, started the, the last time when we were doing the least squares line. <clears throat> so remember we said that we were looking at the, we wanted to minimize the expected value of this y minus a minus bx squared, right? Did this last time? Okay. And we talked about why we would care about doing the minimum of the square. We said that the expected value of the error, this is y minus a minus bx would be your error. Because your a minus bx is giving you the equation of the line, the y is actually referring to the y coordinate of each of your uh, dots in your data or your scatter plot, right? You're doing an x related to a y, 
If I do, if I plug the x into the line, I get a plus bx. The difference between that and the y will give me the error. But if I just look at the expected value of the errors and don't get rid of the negative signs, what was the expected value always turned out to be? Zero. Zero. It was always zero, right? So leaving that to where you can have negative error, leaving a sign in the error, doesn't give you a helpful line, right? Because the expected value is always zero. So instead, we wanted to make our, all of our errors positive, and we went with the squaring rather than the absolute value, because absolute value isn't differentiable everywhere. Right? You get those sharp corners. You can do it with absolute value. There's, you, there's actually parts of statistics where they do things with the absolute value rather than the squaring error. You can do that, but for our purposes, we'll square it because it makes things more friendly as, with regard to calculus. So we minimized this thing. So we did partials with respect to A and B, set them both equal to zero. And right at the end of class, I think we came up with that your B was the correlation coefficient times the standard deviation of Y over the standard deviation of X. All right. And where we defined our correlation coefficient to be the covariance of x and y over the product of the standard deviations. And then we also said that if you go back through and substitute what you found for b and solve for a, you should get... <coughs> mu sub y minus rho times sigma y, oops, it's a y, over sigma x times mu sub x. If you go, if you actually go back, I don't want to take the time to go through the substitution, but if you go through and make the substitution, you actually get that. What that means is that if I re re uh, rewrite the equation of the line, you can actually write it as y minus mu sub y equals rho times sigma y over sigma x times x minus mu sub x. If you go through and just rearrange and factor, you get this. So remember on Friday, Megan told us what point we should go through, what point we want the line to go through if we have a scatter plot, right? What specific point should the line go through no matter what? Yeah, the means, right? It should go through the point mu sub x, mu sub y, which it does. Notice that we didn't start with that assumption when we did this to start with, did we? I just made an arbitrary a and arbitrary b, right? But when we went through the least squares, it came out in the computations that the line needs to pass through that point. It's cool when it worked out the way it's supposed to, right? Okay. All right, so another thing that we can do from this, <clears throat> pardon me, another thing we can do from this is actually show something important about the correlation coefficient. So let's do the expected value of the square of this thing, which looks kind of ugly. I need another parenthesis in here. Parenthesis? Yeah, that's the singular of parentheses. <laughs> you say parenthesis, it drives me nuts. It's kind of like saying vertices or matrices. It drives me crazy. It's parenthesis. This is like you're trying to prophesy. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's look at what the expected value of this thing looks like in this point slope form idea. Okay. All right, so it looks a little bit ugly, but it's not all that bad because I'm going to do the, I'm not going to multiply out these things that I have from parentheses. I am going to square this thing out though. So when you square this thing, you're going to get, it's not going to be bad, I promise. 
you. Thank you. All right. So I'll get I'll get this first term squared, right? Okay. And we also know that we're going to have a sum and difference, so I can break up the expected value over each of those things, correct? Okay. So I'll get the expected value of y minus mu sub y squared. Then I'll get two times the inner and outer term, right? The product of those things. So I'll get minus two rho sigma y over sigma x times, this is expected value of x minus mu sub x, y minus mu sub y. And the last one, I'll get plus, because we're going to square that last term, we're going to rho squared sigma squared y over sigma x squared, expected value of x minus mu sub x squared. Because when you do, when you foil out x plus y or x minus y, you get a 2xy though. All right, and it's close up the end because we're squaring the negative. So there's like what? Since the rho and x are the standard deviation, since that's just a number, we can pull that out. Anyway, because that's just a number that we can pull that out of the expected value. Yep. What is x times y? What is that? This part? This part is that you're asking me everything from? So this is. So if I have a plus b, or I guess minus squared, you get a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. Yeah. This is a. Oops, not the squared. This is b. So my x minus mu x times y minus mu sub y get multiplied, and then I just pull that out in front of the expected value. You see it now? So the y minus mu y squared is that the is that the that's the a. I and this. Uh, this, this is just a constant, so I just put it with the two. This is A, this is B. Okay. Does that help? Cool. What's that? Mm. It's okay. All right, let's look at these pieces because I'm not actually going to write all this stuff out because I promised you it's not going to be messy, and it's not. We just have to remember definitions. What is this the definition of? You take the deviations from the mean, square them, and look at the expected value. What is this the definition of? This is the definition of variance. This is the variance of y. So down here, what's this? That's variance of x, right? So in your first part, you've got variance of y. In the last part, you've got this rho squared, sigma squared, y over sigma x squared times variance of x squared. Now the last one is one we haven't seen before, but it is another definition. This is technically the definition. We just wrote the formula that we would compute it with. Well, how did we come up with the variance of y? We took the deviation of y and multiplied it by the deviation of y, right? How did we come up with the, devi uh, the variance for x? We took the deviation of the x's, multiplied by the deviation of the x's. Now we've mixed them. 
So instead of having the variance of y or the variance of x, what do you think that third expected value piece is? It's the covariance. Yeah, that's, act that's actually the definition of the covariance of x, y. It's multiplied, yeah. Because I'm just replacing the expected value with covariance. You can check if you go through and simplify that. If you foil it out, split up your expected values, you'll get the same formula that we came up with of expected value of x, y minus expected value of x times expected value of y. Yeah, Michael. What is, what is this? This is four. I'm getting there. Be patient. Just... Holy cow. It's, what, very, it's, actually, it's actually a very, very important result in statistics that we're getting to. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Marshall. Um, could you repeat what you said, capital Y and capital X are? Those are the random variables that are jointly distributed. So they're related in some way. Okay. Uh, they may or may not be independent, but they have a joint distribution. So they're just two random variables. Maybe it's um, one of the examples from insurance that they like to give a lot of. X is the time from accident to filing the claim and y is the time from filing the claim to getting the claim paid. So that could be what your x and y is, those two time values. And clearly they're going to be related because it, if you uh, file your claim faster, you, you should get your payment faster. Kind of idea. Because I just didn't know if we had like the specific means for each variable. So like if we have the mean value but we don't have the x and y. Well, so the x and the y are just the the expressions for the random variables themselves. Okay. So you your mu sub x and mu sub y are your uh, population mean. Well, that's the statistics over the population mean. Typically, you're going to approximate those by you've got a random sample from the random variable, and you'll do the mean of the sample and pull up those in those spots. Okay. I mean, the whole point of doing all of this with least squares is to get a linear approximation of what the heck's going on. Right. And then the correlation, the row, gives us, the idea behind the row is that it is going to give us a measure of how good that is. Okay. Okay. That's what we're getting to, even though Michael's being impatient. Oh, you are just Dr. Joe on the right, right. side. Right. <laughs> yes, sir. On the very right, mm -hmm. those two cancel? Yes, uh, yep, I'm getting there. <laughs> Everybody's being impatient. No, you have the two written above the x, and then on the right, you have the two. No, that's the squared on the sigma. They're both on the sigma. Oh. Yep. All right. So, yeah, Sam's right. This will cancel with that, right? Okay. All right. Let's look at covariance here. We have a relationship between covariance and correlation, right? The correlation is the covariance divided by the product of the standard deviations. Yeah. So the, the covariance will be the correlation times the product of the standard deviations. So in this particular one, we can replace this. Let me leave it in red. I can replace this with rho times sigma x sigma y. And then this sigma x will cancel with that one. Yep. Here's the, now notice, here's something that is something that happened really cool before we're even done. All the references to x just went away. Oh boy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this expected, but yeah, the expected error that we have in here is only in terms of y, not in terms of x. So we just got, we're redoing the calculation of the expected error in this least squares idea. It only depends on the y and the correlation. All the x's went away. Even better, notice that this is minus 2 rho squared sigma y squared, right? When we simplify it, and then we got a plus rho squared sigma y squared, don't we? So we're going to have minus 1 left, correct? Okay. All right. So this will factor, finally, as sigma y squared times 1 minus rho squared.
That's what it simplifies all the way down to. All right. Why is this important? This is actually, like I said, it's a very important result in statistics. Why is this important? How did we get all the way to here? I started with a big text box that pop up. I started with that expected value, correct? Okay. It's the expected value of a square. What's not possible to come out of an expected value of a square? A negative value, right? I cannot get a negative value out of it. Because think about how you do expected value. You either sum the function times the PDF or integrate the function times the PDF. PDFs aren't negative. This isn't negative. If I sum or integrate, it can't be negative. Okay? Why is that important? Okay. What do I know about this? Well, certainly it's a variance. It's not negative. This can't be negative, right? Because it's the expected value of a square. So from all of this, we note that 1 minus rho squared must be greater than or equal to 0, no matter what. Or, if I just simplify things, your correlation coefficient, no matter what, has to be between negative 1 and 1. No matter what, it always has to be between negative 1 and 1. <coughs> so how come on the calculator it stretches the fact that the correlation coefficient and the correlation coefficient squared are two separate ones? Okay, so the correlation is a measure of how good of an or how good of a linear relationship there is. This one minus rho squared actually gives you a measure of the rho squared part actually gives you a measure of. Well, if they, look, notice that this is actually one or negative one. There is no variance anymore. There's no the expected value is zero, so it's perfectly linearly correlated, right? So the bigger this rho squared is, the better the approximation is. So the rho squared is a measure of how much error is explained by the linear model. And we'll actually talk about that more next semester. But this is why we went through all this, Michael, is for this result. It's important. <laughs> yes? So what is it? What is what? The equation, what is it? What equation? Like, if you have it equal to, is it like something important? Or like... Well, it's equal to this. Dr. Joe just went... Okay, but what's that? I didn't go insane. It's, it's so right? important. I, it. Yeah. I, mean, I said you're being impatient. And it is important. I need to write something on the other side of the equal sign that is not that. It is. It's right here. It started right here. It is this. So is that R squared? Hmm? Is that R squared? No. This is R squared. Okay, so rho is really R. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so why do I care about this? <laughs> okay, there's two big reasons why we care about this. Number one, the correlation coefficient has to be between negative and one and one, no matter what. We just proved that. I agree. Okay. That's all that was. Well, it was part of what that was. <laughs> <laughs> so I tell you that this is not important, and you just went on a potential Instagram page. It is important. Okay. I, thought it, was pretty, I, mean, I thought it was pretty cool. Okay, there's, there's three things about this line here in When will I use the, the sigma or variance of y squared times 1 minus? This pops up in the next section for a bivariate normal distribution. We don't need it right now. You will need it, yes. We don't need it right this second. We'll need it in like two sections. There's three. <laughs> yeah, throw it. You can you guys on your hand, too. I was just going to ask if this was an equation that we used, like. In a problem, if it's a problem, or if this was just proving that it was between. At this point, it was, we're just proving this okay. part. Yes, actually, calculating the correlation coefficient <laughs> is what you would be asking. 
<laughs> what? what are you all laughing about now? Nothing. <laughs> the problems would involve calculating and using the covariance formula. Okay. Uh, so with the original expected value starting with? Yes. Uh, isn't that just to, so we, if you have an equation for the line? Yes. And then that you, is what that is. You solve, yeah. But you solve it. So could you send it to the end of the what, it's the equation, well, the, the, the difference between the two is that you're doing this distribution. Uh, okay, so this is the right-hand side of the equation, essentially, where y would be on the other side. This is what is typically referred to as a predicted y. Apparently none of you in this room are going to be statisticians, because this is <laughs> no exciting stuff. No. But, it, but if you're going to interpret statistics at all, this is exceptionally important. You should at least know where it comes from. Okay, well now we know. Well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> it's really not that important, though. Yes, it is. <laughs> Holy crap! Trust me, if you're going to run to engineering tests and have statistical significance, this is going to be a crap of importance for you, I promise. All right. <laughs> anyway, this is the equation of your line. The line is giving you predicted wise. So when you're right, when we're writing this, really what we're doing is the difference between we're doing difference between actual y or observed y minus predicted y. Oh. So, so we're looking for the expected value of the difference in those yeah. things. So That's why I didn't like why it's an error. Yeah. So if it's perfectly linear, then it will be zero. If it actually the line lands on it. Which is the second important thing. The first important thing is that this measure can't be outside of this region. Don't give me air quotes. <laughs> <laughs> okay? Here's the second important thing. If it's 1 or negative 1, what does the expected value turn out to be? Zero. Zero. Which means that this is, a, tells you exactly when it's a perfect linear relationship. And also, the closer that those get to 1, the closer the expected value gets to 0, the more linear the relationship is. That was important thing number two. The closer that it is to one or negative one tells you the importance of the. What are you drawing? I'm doing an art project. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you saw random numbers being colored in. That's the other part about it is that the closer you get to one or the closer you get to negative one, the closer this expected error gets to zero. The closer to a, a linear relationship is between the two variables. Okay. Which is what the third thing is, is why this, when we're doing this particular calculation, why this row squared pops up in an evaluation for your models, because it's the row squared that's telling you how much error is explained, not the row. So if you've seen statistics where you're doing rows, uh, the R squared, usually they call the R squared rather than the row, the R squared tells you a measure of what the, how much error is explained, because that's exactly what we're doing here. The error that's left is the difference. So that's why you write it as a percentage of the error explained. That's why I went through all of this to get to this point. In hindsight, apparently that was a bad decision. I like it. gives you a chance. I, I support you, Dr. Joe. Thank you, Alex. Okay, great. So that is expected error. Correct. And we want it to be closer to zero. Yes. And the better the, the closer it is to zero, the better your model is. So that's what that was that was the whole point of the whole Michael's just mad. I'm, I'm not mad. mad. <laughs> Michael is mad. This is expected error. Right? This is this is expected error, right? That's, well the, the expected square error, I should say. Because we squared it to you because we know that expected error is zero. We have to square it to make it not zero. But the closer that row value gets to one or negative one, the smaller the error will be. That's it. So what about that part that says it leaves the actual value? 
that is a different analysis for a different day, and Michael doesn't think it's important, so I'm not going to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, if you're going to do statistical analysis, you're going to give a large crap about the R squared value. <laughs> <laughs> I promise. <laughs> and I, Here, here's my crap. This is what I get. This is what I get. And we could actually derive this. I didn't have to just say believe it or flunk. I don't like doing that. So, what do we you believe it? Well, good. Well, we gotta believe it. I did prove it. <laughs> what is this? I absolutely did prove it. All right. Well, I'm so glad I did. It was great. So let's go on to something new. I'm not even going to ask you any questions. I'm done answering questions. <laughs> I'm out. I'm trying to question. All right. This is new stuff. This is conditional probability. Ty, you answered your question. Conditional distribution. <laughs> I didn't answer your question on that, did I? Conditional distribution is what we're doing now. Conditional, conditional just never go away. go away. I know, it never does. It's like, ooh. Can they go away? Where do they go away? <laughs> <laughs> no, well, it's going to be there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what was funny? What was funny? said, never go in. I said, it's like Michael. It's pretty good. All right. My own expense was still pretty good. It was still pretty good. All right. Do this. You should be able to do this without any new information. All right, let's do it. Oh, I probably didn't give you a handout. It's okay, I did my last class too. Michael got me flustered. It's your fault. I'm blaming Michael for everything. Okay, well, it wasn't your fault, my fault that uh, it happened the first time. Yeah, it was. I was worried about you coming into class. I haven't come to the class the past two class periods. Well, no, because the last time I requested you not come into the class period. So... Yeah, because in general, I don't care if you come in or not. During the next class. Yeah, they do not disrupt it, you just come in. I did think that care. it was pretty funny. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's Dr. Stuckey's rules. He can have his own rules. I support it. Why would you want to sit in the class anyways? Is the PR supposed to be like It's just probability. Yeah. Is it like the sum? Yeah, you want the like you want the, plus, the probability to get zero as zero plus zero is point oh eight. Correct. Well, the probability that x is zero and y is zero is point oh eight. <laughs> okay. So it's a, it's the and probability. Okay. So the probability that x is one and y is two is point oh six. Gotcha. So, how did I do? Last two plus one minus two is this. I'm done my head. I'm down there, but. Whoa. I feel like I've got a garage in the room right now. <laughs> this is what happens when you're not griping about everything else. <laughs> I didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> is that less? I wish it was equal to. This thing is not equal to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
What'd you say? So I have an idea, but I don't do it. All right, what do we need to compute in this problem? Oh, you want to wait? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, I'll wait. Oh, yeah, I'll wait. I'll wait. Dr. Joe, they're going to get mad. I'm going to get a pitchfork. And, and a torch. It's wonderful. Angry Whistler's mother. Do you think you have me? Yes. So we're going to set the left side to the intersection over the right side. Okay. That's our definition for the conditional probability, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay. Uh -huh. Can we figure out those pieces? Yeah. Uh -huh. Which What's part of the table corresponds to what we need for the denominator? Yeah. That part. Oh. Yeah. We agree. Wait, that's the part of the table that we're worried about for the denominator? Yeah. yeah. And what's the numerator going to be? Which ones do I need to look at? I need this, right? So I need this whole column, you tell, you tell me, okay? And the point one six. Wow, you can't even read that now that I crossed it all off. Yeah, the point one six. wow. <laughs> if I show you up, I want an apology. <laughs> there you go. There you go. There you go. Thank Damn. You. <laughs> I think class is a lot. Like we should have video on too. Audio recording. Show. Ten years from now. <laughs> I need to. <laughs> All right. Everybody see where those are coming from? What we have circled and whatever boxed. Yeah. All right. So this should be, from a computational standpoint, your numerator should look like what? 0 0.05 plus 0 0.16. You get 0 0.21 on top. And on bottom, you got an extra uh, 0.1, so it should be 0.31 on bo bottom. Yeah? Whatever that decimal approximation is, 21, 31 first. Uh, 0.68. What is it? 0 0.68. Okay. Good enough. All right. This is not new, right? This is stuff that we've talked about before doing the probability of the intersection over the probability of the given piece. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's not anything new. So if you were asked to do that one. It's a new one, yeah. Like, isn't we won't be able to do it, or is it? No, it's the same kind of thing. It's a new problem, sorry. I thought that's what you were asking me. That's right. I didn't know what you said, but I'm, I'll agree with you. 
Hey, Travis Grant. He's not as good as all of us. Uh-huh. No, the person is to her right. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Who knows what he might try to get me to say on video. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm pretty sure you have said chai. <laughs> like chai tea. Chai tea, yeah. Tea tea. So does wine go from the wine now? Yes. Why do you want to agree? So if x is 1, then the only possible possibility for y is 1. If x is 2, y could be 1 or 2, well, and so on. Them, so. Why do you have numbers for Dr. Stables? I'll play at the class. OK. So does does y only go up to three, or is it is it saying that y, the biggest that y can get depends on the x value. So if x is one, y can only be one. If x is two, then y could be one or y could be two. If x is three, then y could be one, y could be two, or y could be three. That's what the notation means. But x can only be up to three. Correct. When can y be greater than or equal to 2? Okay, so you have the case when 2, 2, right? x is 2, y is 2. What else? 3, 2, and 3, 3, right? So notice that we're only going to be looking at these three possibilities, period. Much like what we did in the previous problem where we just boxed off the table where we were going to look to start with, right? We agree? Right? Okay. So if I want y to be 3, of those 3, which case are we looking at? The 3, 3 case, right? Of these 3, these are, this is the only time that y can be 3. Right? I don't even care about the rest of them. 
right? Because I'm only, I'm only concerned with when y is greater than or equal to 2, right? So I, the first thing I did was just look at these cases, and then looking at this particular case, this is when y can be 3. That's it, right? We agree? Okay. So when we do these probabilities now, so I want the probability that y is 3, given that y is greater than or equal to 2, what's it going to look like? What's on the numerator? The probability of the 3 comma 3, right? So I'll we'll have 18 out of 56 on top. we we'll put 3 in for x and 3 in for y. What's going to be in the denominator? Okay, so it's going to be 18 out of 56 and... Okay, it should be a 13 out of 56 and an 8 out of 56. All right. This will give us 18 out of 39. Because you can only do the three comma three, right? What if I asked you what's the probability that y is equal to two, given the probability that y is oops, given that y is greater than or equal to two? Okay. Be seven thirteens. I agree. It's the complement. Yeah. Why did I know it was a complement? Because let's look at how your space is made up, too, right? But this is these are the only cases that we have when y is greater than or equal to two, right? We agree. Okay. Well, if I've only this particular case happens six thirteenths of the time, so the rest of them must happen seven thirteenths of the time. If I know this already occurred, right? The rest of them have that. It has still has to add up to one. So this is what we're talking about when we get to conditional distributions. <clears throat> we're given a condition for what the variable has to be. In this particular case, the condition was the variable was y is greater than or equal to 2. Well, there's a possibility that y could be 3 and 2, but that's it. Those are the only possibilities, right? So they still have to add up to 1. And if you went through and calculated the other part, I mean, the 13 plus uh, 1356 plus 856 over this denominator, I would get 7 thirteenths uh, as well. <laughs> Did she ask you to time? Oh my God. <laughs> That's funny. You're crap for my wife, and she's not even in here. <laughs> that's, that's, that's pretty um, next level. <laughs> practical, uh, practical joke. <laughs> so you're going to do this now every class, Haley? You're going to hold up signs for how much time I have left? Yeah. I don't know. I have to have That's pretty next level. <laughs> that's, pretty, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. I like it. Anyway. So what we'll finish up with next time, since apparently I'm almost out of time, <laughs> we'll finish up with next time is talking about doing conditional distributions, both in discrete and continuous cases. So we'll work on that on Wednesday. Uh, just as a heads up, we will not have class Friday. I'm going to be out of town for a conference. So I will not be here. All right. Have a good one. See you Wednesday. I know. <laughs> well, I didn't know what the three meant when you held it up the first time. I know, I forgot to write on that one.
That's what she told you to do? That was her art project. Oh my god.